Okay. Go towards your mat. Sit down. Make sure you have your feet shoulder width apart. Second toe aligns with center of ankle, so big toes are a little bit inwards. Knees align with center of ankle. Lay on your back, hands alongside your body. Open your shoulders towards the floor. Inhale for expand your chest towards the ceiling. Exhale to drop your ribcage, drop your abdominal, hold your spine. Back keep a hold between the floor and the lower back. And inhale, expand the ribcage. Exhale, reinforce your neutral. Drop the ribcage. Rib Make your body narrow. Inhale. On this exhale, you're going to drop your lower back towards the floor. You're going to push your belly button into your spine and you're going to scoop your abdominals in. Pale bodies to the ceiling. Inhale, hold there. Exhale, try and get your ribcage and your hip bones a little bit more closer together. Maybe imprinting your spine a little stronger on the mat. Inhale, hold. Exhale, keep your imprint, but try and open your shoulders more towards the floor. Inhale, hold. Exhale, with control, without relaxing your abdominals, you're going to go back into your neutral. Find a gap between the floor and the lower back. Inhale there. Exhale, reinforce the neutral. Inhale, try to expand sideways. Exhale, neutral. Inhale, shoulders on the floor. Exhale, find your imprint. Don't let the shoulders lift from the floor. Inhale, hold your imprint. Exhale, take your tailbone higher into the ceiling. Your bum is soft. Inhale, hold. Exhale, reinforce your imprint. Try and make yourself more narrow. Now, stay with this imprint, it's fine. Pick up one leg into your tabletop. Second leg into your tabletop. Knees and heels are connected. Um, knees are over your hips. If your hip flexors are hurting, bring your knees a little closer, but try and keep this 90 degree angle. So if your knees are closer, don't close, keep the 90. Now, if you're with me, 90, 90, uh, lumbar spine is imprinted. You're gonna pick up your arms towards the ceiling. Now, in this position, I want both shoulder blades on the floor, but I still want the middle back and the lower back on the floor. So sometimes we just press the shoulder blades so hard that our middle back just lifts, so make sure you're flat. From here, you're going to keep the distance between your shoulders and your ears as you reach your hands behind you. And you're going to think shoulder blade to bum as you bring your hands back into the ceiling. And reach back, don't let the shoulder blades come higher, don't let your shoulder heads come higher. And reach the ceiling, reinforcing your imprint and thinking shoulder blades to bum. This is a fairly simple exercise mechanics-wise, so try to be super perfect. See if you can get your belly button a little bit closer to your spine. See if you can get your spine a little bit, um, not closer to the floor, it's already touching the floor, but pressing harder into it. And if that's going well, think about finding that pressure in the back of your armpit. That pressure that comes from pushing the shoulder blades into the body. Now, meet me hands in the ceiling. Keep your elbows straight, palms facing each other. Separate your legs slightly. Inhale to prepare, exhale to reinforce your imprint. Now, right leg is gonna work to tap the floor and come back towards tabletop. Keep working with your right leg, tapping and coming back to the ceiling. By ceiling, I mean tabletop. The challenge here is to keep your imprint as stable as possible. So you're doing this slowly and as you tap you're thinking, don't let go, don't let go. And as you come up you're thinking, okay, I'm safe, reinforce. And hold, don't let go. And reinforce. And if your spinal connection is working for you, then take a little bit of attention towards your shoulders. Are your shoulder blades still pushing towards your bum? It should be. Are your elbows straight? In your legs, do you still have a 90 degree angle between your knee, uh, between your shin and your thigh? So 90 degree angle on your knee. Let's keep the right leg up now. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, reinforce your imprint. And now the left leg works to tap the floor. And come back up. And tap. And up. Take this at your 
um, page. If you feel like you can't cut the floor without losing your imprint, just cut stay a little higher. If your hip flexors are killing you here, feel free to bring the supporting knee closer to your body. Just make sure you keep a 90 degree angle between shin and thigh. We're gonna do two more here. And reach. And reinforce. And reach. And reinforce. Both legs stay tabletop. Your arms are gonna go a little bit behind you. So 45 is as far as I want you to go. Make sure that you can keep a strong imprint in this position. So inhale to prepare. Exhale, reinforce the imprint. Now, right leg taps the floor and you're gonna swap and swap. Again, tap the floor only if you don't lose your imprint. Keep flexor problems, knees closer to the chest. If you're still struggling with your imprint, bring your arms to the ceiling. The most important thing about the arms here is that your shoulders are not by your ears. So it doesn't really matter where your hands are pointing, as long as your shoulder blades are pointing towards your bum. We just have two more. One, two. We're not gonna do fast ones today. Uh, both legs tabletop, connect knees and heels, interlace your hands and get them behind your head. Find your neutral spine. So remember, I want a gap between the floor and the lower back, but I don't want you to be indulgent. So make sure your ribcage is still working to pull down, but then your tailbone is giving forward. Take your elbows towards the ceiling. See if you can take the weight of your head comfortably. And from here, inhale, prepare. Exhale, chest lift. On the chest lift, I don't mind the lower back touching the floor, but I don't want you to push against the floor. We want both shoulder blades off. You're gonna inhale up, maybe come a little higher. And exhale. Inhale, prepare. Exhale up. Inhale, higher. And down. Up. Up. Higher. Down. Up. Up. Higher. Down. Two more like this. Inhale. Exhale up in neutral. Inhale, higher in neutral. And down, last one. And up. And higher. And down. Now let's swap our spine. I'll tell you when. Start in neutral. Exhale up. Now find an imprint to come higher. Now try and go to neutral. And down. Up in neutral. Higher in imprint. And neutral. And down. Up neutral. Higher imprint. Neutral. Down, up, higher, neutral, down, and up, and higher, neutral, down, last one, up, higher imprint, stay with me in this high imprint. Now I want you to really look at your belly button as you go into your neutral, don't let it bulge out, you're still very narrow. And we're going to go for the rotation, inhale, prepare, exhale, up. Inhale, stay up and maybe a little higher. Exhale, turn. Inhale, center. Exhale, turn. And center. And turn. You know the mechanics, so take it in your own rhythm. Think that both shoulder blades should be off the floor at all times. Center position is the highest position. Belly button is towards your spine, it's not bulging out. Just one more. Stay up, extend both legs to ceiling. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, come a little bit higher. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, interlace your hands, reach towards your toes. Now you're gonna take your fingers towards the outside of your little toe of your right side and have tiny pulses. 10, nine, eight, keep going. Shoulder blades never touch the floor. You're pulsing at your highest. High, high, two more because I lost count. Stay up, go to the center in your highest. Cross towards the tiny toe of your left and pulse, pulse. Keep going. Breastbone aligns with left knee. Higher, 
well. Hang on. Last still goes now. Go and then stay up. Go to the center. Try to go higher. But shoulders are so far away from your ears. Higher. And uh, keep your legs towards the ceiling. Arms open into a T position. Palms face the ceiling. Uh, again, we're aiming for a neutral spine. But if this pulls somewhere on your hamstrings or on your hip flexors, you can put the, the lower back on the floor with no pressure. Or you can bring your knees a little higher. If this is still far from happening, just bend your knees a little bit. But don't let the legs be straight and low, because that's just biomechanically very uncomfortable. From here, big toes stay leveled as you take your legs sideways. Now stay into your far away side position. Make sure that you haven't brought your knees close to you. Keep that 90. Opposite bum lifts, but opposite shoulder blade stays. To come back into the center, you're gonna use a strong abdominal connection. And opposite side, keep big toes aligned. Opposite bum lifts, opposite shoulder blade stays, and abdominal connection to come back. Be careful when you are outside to not let your lower back arch too much. Now take it into a rhythm that serves you. It doesn't need to be very fast. I think today we're going more for a connection day rather than a cardio day. Um, do two more or however many you need to be even. Really think belly button to spine to help you come back. Meet me in the center. Both hands towards the ceiling. I want the same connection of the middle back where both the spine and the shoulder blades are planted on the floor. Try and find a neutral spine if you have it. Otherwise, put your lower back on the floor with no pressure. And same thing, take your legs sideways. But now see how far can you go without lifting opposite shoulder blade and center. And opposite side, toes aligned and center. You'll probably find one side way weaker than the other one. For me, it's my left. So on that side, just be mindful, be more aware of your shoulder blades. They really are the thing that glues you to the floor. Again, two more, or however many you need to be even. <laughs> Not however many you need until forever. That would just be, you know, unproductive. Okay. Double leg tabletop. Interlace your hands. And hands behind your head. We're going to start your abdominal portion. This is your double leg stretch. Uh, inhale to prepare. Exhale to find your imprinted spine. Inhale, prepare again. Exhale up. From here, hands are going to reach towards your knees. So I'm gonna, we're gonna try and allow our knees to come a little bit closer towards our chest. Not much, this is it. And because the knees are closer, the 90, to, the 90, 90 degree angle brings your legs a little bit into a diagonal. And what I want you to think today is that, well, when you stretch, same thing, the chest stays super high and you keep it high as you stretch, but then as you fall back, think knees coming in instead of thinking heels coming down. Let's see if this makes sense. Find your initial position. Knees are a little bit closer to your chest. You're still bending your elbows to lift it. Now hold this lift as you stretch and now gather in. Think knees towards your nose. And extend and gather. Extend and gather. As fast or as slow as you need to feel everything working. Belly button is the spine always, so you're not bulging your abs out. Last one. Now stay here with me. Both hands go on top of right knee. Left knee extends. Still use this pressure of the shin pushing away to help you lift your body. And from here, keep the height of your upper body and swap. And swap. Swap. If you want a breath, you can exhale every time you swap. You go, you just have three more. One, and two, and three. Now, hold behind your legs to come up. We're gonna go for our teasers. You're gonna swap it a little bit today. First, 
We're just gonna move our spine a little bit just to get out of this imprint. So both feet on the floor, hold behind your, your thighs, and from here, find your deep position. If I want an expansion of the lower back, sit over your sits bones, shoulder blades are connected, chest is shining through, but the ribcage is still pushing down, you have an activation there. Neck is in line with the rest of the spine. From here, you're gonna tuck in your pelvis, um, not because you're using your bum, but because your abs are folding in, and you're just gonna round, so we're not gonna go down. We're just finding a lovely curve. From here, rock your pelvis forwards, find a neutral in the lower back, and then let that flat line ripple towards your spine. Find a lovely line. And punch in the stomach, tuck. Bum is relaxed, find a curve in your lower back. And now inhale, exhale, tilt your pelvis forward, belly buttons in. Now let that extension go up into your middle back, up into your neck, ribcage down. Just one more. Tilt your pelvis, rock back. Find a strong abdominal connection. Last one. Rock your pelvis forward. Find an extension in the lower back, extension in the middle back, extension in the neck, but the ribcage is pulling down. From here, I'm gonna go straight into teaser one. If you find that it's too much for you, I want you to use either the double leg tabletop holding or the double leg tabletop with the arms up. If you're with me, let's just go for it. One leg tabletop, second leg tabletop, extend your legs. From here, extend your arms. Try and keep the height of the legs steady as you go down, her legs steady as you come up and recover. We're gonna go slow and down and up. We have two more coming. Now let's just talk arms. Arms go down and overhead, down, overhead, last one, down and overhead, down, overhead. Stay here with me. Find that extension of the lower back. Drop your arms. Now, legs down, arms up, legs up, arms down. Open the space, close the space. Open, close. Open, close, one more. Open, close, stay closed. Extend your lower back, open your arms. Let's stay. And oh, that felt a little better. I hope you all is going better. Your videos are going really good, by the way. I'm really pleased. Spinal articulation. Let's focus on this pelvis we just did, going from the extension to the flexion. I also our open leg rocker. So you're gonna open your legs sideways. I was seeing today that loads of people like to hold like this. I don't know if you're doing it. I find it much easier to have your thumb wrapping around. So one leg out, second leg out. Your flexibility wise, this is not happening. Just bend your knees for me. Now here, really sit over your sit bones. Think about extending the lower back, extending the middle back, extending your, knee, your neck. From there, you're gonna tilt your pelvis and you're gonna roll back, and then you're gonna come back forward. And here, see how I'm curved? This extension is a thing that stops you. And curve back, and forward. Extend to land that motion. And curve back, curve, oops. And now we go forward. Important thing, whichever position you have of arms and legs, don't let it move. <laughs> Don't let your arms bend in the middle of the motion. Also, the shoulder blades play such a big part here. Think shoulder blades down and together. Find that contraction under the armpit, especially when you're coming up. Last one, meet me at the top. Stay there. Knees are straight if you're working with a straight leg. If that's the case, make your quad work. Shoulder blades down and together, chest forward, head forward. Yeah. Exhale, bend both knees. Get your legs together. Uh, we didn't do it before because we're nailing it today. Knees and ankles together, hands on top of shins. Hands are not interlaced. Elbows are out. Shoulders are down. Pelvis is stuck under. From here, try and find a deeper abdominal connection. 
belly button to spine, tailbone to ceiling. The distance between knees and chest and between heels and bum does not change. Keep this position stable as you roll back and roll forward. Stay with the forward position and up and forward. Freeze for half a second, show that you got it. And back and forward. Back, forward. Common mistake is to extend the lower back to try and help us stop. What I want you to work with is keeping this strong abdominal connection. And you know, you'll start to figure out how much momentum do you need to be able to keep the curve. So even if you're, you know, kind of falling everywhere, that's all good work. That's calibrating work. One more, you're gonna meet me at the top. And stay there. Elbows higher. Shoulder blades lower. Belly button is fine. Let's go straight into our seal puppy. Back with one arm under, other arm under. Heels and toes are connected. Hold your feet. You're going to tap three times in the top position. You're going to roll back. Tap three times there. Up, tap, down, tap. Uh, I did like this, which is two, but it's three taps. Uh, try and still find that curved lower back, that scoop position. Shoulder blades are down. And I'll start with three taps. One, two, three. And back. One, two, three. Forward. One, two, three. Back. One, two, three. Forward. One, two, three. Keep going. Thinking that if you fall forward or backwards, you will not get hurt. So just go for it. Once you have the rolling though, think about keeping that curved lower back and that strong belly button to spine connection. We're gonna do one more one. So you're gonna meet me at the top, balancing oh so well. And from this balance, we're gonna reinforce our position. Belly button and double to seal. Drop the shoulder blades. Yeah. And exhale. And level. Feet to the floor. Uh, let's go towards our bridging section. So get your theraband. Uh, you're going to be sitting down, feet, I would say hip width, but if they go a little wider, I don't really mind as long as you're not either sickling, yeah, I don't think you will be doing the other one, so just try not to sickle, just try and have the weight well distributed. Now, I find it helpful to wrap the band around my hand here, otherwise you won't have a lot of grip. Also, bear in mind, it's a fairly difficult exercise, so don't put too much load on it. Uh, 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 you should have the band, not with load, but fairly straight in the beginning position. We want hands in front of shoulders, palms facing away, elbows point out, and they stay out from here. You're going to take your hands up, thinking that you're gliding your hands on a flat surface in front of you. Find the top position with a straight elbow, but shoulders are down, and then slowly back down making sure the elbows are still pointing outward, not forward. You know you finished when your hands are fairly in front of your shoulders. And go up, push, 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 push. And now, uh, don't rush yourself on the way down, even if it feels like you can't handle it. Because <laughs> you'll be able to, also that's where a lot of the good work is. Now let's go for details. As you push your hands up, I really want you to think about taking your shoulder blades lower in your body and slowly down. This is super important work for lifts when you need to get someone's weight on top of you or you need your shoulder blades to be connected to your body because your arms can't take it. It needs to be a full body work. Go up, stretch your elbows, shoulders down. We're going to do a slow one. Well, we're going to do two slow ones. They're going to be the last one. So, you're going to go up in five. One, two, three, four, five, stay up, shoulder blades down, ribcage in, but the lower back is still extended, and slowly down, five, four, three, two, one, one more like this, and start taking your hands up, five, four, three, two, one, stay up, shoulders down, ribcage down, and up. Four, three, 
two, one. Well done. We're gonna go for our rows. Simple exercise, so go for a heavier load. Knees can be straight if flexibility allows. If not, just bend your knees, it's completely fine. Just make sure that you're able to sit on your sit bones and that you have a slight extension of the lower back. The bend should be straight on the initial position, but not pulling. From here, as you can see, if you're relaxed, the shoulders pull forward. So I want you in your initial position to get your shoulder blades connected. Your chest should be open wide, but as you connect with your shoulder blades, don't let your ribcage fall out. Think ribcage in. From here, nothing moves. As you bend both elbows, taking them behind your back, and then slowly you bring your elbows forward without letting those shoulder blades fall apart. Keep them pinching together. And pull. And forward. And on these next two ones, I just want you to think of keeping the shoulder blades working together even when you come forward. Now, let's think about the elbows. Elbows go back, stay there with me. Keep the elbows where they are, but now think about pulling them down towards the floor. So further back and further down. And slowly back to initial position. And as you push back, think already. Elbows down and back, down and back, down and back, down and back. And forward. And elbow down and back. And forward. Three more. One. Second to last, stay there for me. Get your elbows closer together. Get your elbows down. Find a way to feel it in your armpit. From here, five counts to get out of it. Five, four shoulder blades together. Three, shoulder blades together. Two, <laughs> and the right one, one last one. Slowly into it, get your shoulder blades together first and push back. Four, three, two, one, stay there. Elbows pulling together and down and stay there. And slowly. Five, four, make your rib cage is down, make your shoulder blades are together. And by now you have probably arrived. Last exercise of our bridging section is our front support. So it's the one that's kind of like a plank. Hands are on the floor. Hands are right below your shoulders. Knees in your, what's the word? Preparatory, preparing. And as you're setting up, knees are under your hips and make sure this four point kneeling is already a very clean one. So think about running your hands towards your knees, your knees towards your hands. Make sure you have a neutral on your lower back belly button is glued towards your spine. Head is poking out, like you're trying to get it out of your spine. From here, stretch one leg behind you, nothing moves in your spine. Stretch the second leg, nothing moves in your spine. Take your weight a little bit forward. Now, don't let your pelvis stuck or extend. Find a neutral. From there, tap the floor and come back. Swap legs, tap the floor, come back. The leg that taps has zero weight and you're gonna keep swapping. And the thing that you're focused on is your spine. Check that your spine is completely stable. Also that your belly button is pressing in. So your abs are not relaxing towards the floor. Check that your hands are still pushing into the floor and you have a lift of your chest. Chest is not falling towards the floor. Stay in the plank for me. More belly button to spine, more neutral. Push your hands more into the floor. Inhale. Exhale. And let it get. Twirl your wrist a little bit. Next one is your front leg pull. Same initial position, you're gonna find your plank and then you're gonna do five kicks with a straight leg. Again, the challenge is to keep your spine stable. Set yourself into a perfect four-point kneeling before you start. It's really important to spread your fingers well on the floor. Now, shoulder blades down towards your bum, head out, extend one leg, extend the second leg. Let's start with the right. Point to right, and I'll kick it without extending your lower back and slowly down. Kick, and down with control. Three more, one, two, three. Swap left, point your left, press your hands away. Five, 
four, three, two, one. To soft legs, one more time. Five, so don't let your belly button lift to the floor. Don't let your lower back arch. Swap, left leg. One, two, belly button in as you kick. Four, five, find your plank. Go forward, find your neutral. And up. And wriggle your wrist. And let's go towards the bridging. Is that the bridging? No, that's what we just did. Left foot flex in the rotation. Take your time to tie your third end. It's going to be there for the whole section. So we're going to tie it above your knees. And we want it quite tight. We also don't want it to be wrinkly because otherwise it's going to go up your thighs when you're working. And that's just really uncomfortable. It will probably make you stop the exercise, which we don't want to. Yeah, waste some time here. God knows I need to, so you might as well. Otherwise, you'll just be seeing me tying the bend. When I was practicing, I was trying to rush it, and it just went wrong so many times. Okay. Today I'm taking the longest. If you feel like you tied it and it's a bit saggy, you can just push it up a little. Uh, let's take it with our sideline. Uh, bottom hand art is straight, bottom arm is straight on the floor. Your head is relaxed there. On my morning studies, I saw that quite a lot of people like to have a strong pressure on the floor instead of just a weightless hand. So let's embrace the strong pressure on the floor, see if it works for you. Now, we want a small banana shape happening, so I want you to scoop your pelvis. It doesn't mean that your hip flexors are working, it means that you have a strong abdominal connection. From here, top leg goes to parallel, second leg goes up, and let's try and already push our side body, bottom side body, into the floor. Now let's try and keep this connection as we tap to go higher. And when I say tap, I mean side body <laughs> pushing deeper into the floor. The feet are just together and going higher and higher. And because today we're doing everything a little slower, really go high slow. Check that both hips are stacked at both times. Check that your belly button is glued to your spine. Somehow your tailbone is still pressing towards the front of the room. And your side body never left the floor. May or may not be true, but you're right. Stay at your highest now, side body onto the floor. Really use this hand to help you, see if that works for you. Now, top leg goes forward, back leg goes back. Keep the legs parallel and take them higher in this V position. And higher. And push. Tailbone a little bit forward, but belly button is super in. Side body glued to the floor. You should be starting to feel your top side body working. If that's not happening, it might be that you're letting your top hip fall back. We just have two more. Stay at your highest, belly button in. Now don't let your tailbone go anywhere as you get both legs together though, and slowly down. Now, uh, arms stay as they are, but we're gonna work with the gap between the floor and the middle the, um, and the side body. So don't let your body touch the floor. If it touches, you know that you kind of messed it up. Also, lose your scoop shape. Aim for this perfect line. Hands on the floor. Top leg is gonna go up in parallel. Now you're gonna turn both legs out into your turn up. And now you're gonna slowly lift your top leg, trying to reinforce your turn up. So I want you to think like your leg is spiraling off of your body, reaching far, far away as you come higher with more turn up and then slowly let it go down as you try and get more of that turn up coming from the back of your bum. So it's not the glute, it's deeper than the glute. Legs meet in first and find a parallel. Hand is in the front though, I'm just carrying it out to help explain. And top leg out in parallel. Both legs turn out and start taking your leg higher. And higher, now have a peek. Check that your legs on in front of your body. If you were kicking for real, it should be going behind your shoulder. Stay there, turn out more. And now slowly down, reinforce the turn out. 
Really think about going from your hip and then towards your knee and then towards your shin. Meet in first position and parallel. Open in parallel and turn out and reach far away, turn out. Reach and lift and reach and lift and reach and lift. Stay at your highest. You know, and keep that turn out. Reinforce the turn out as you go down. Next one is the last one. Legs meet in turn out. Find a parallel. Lift in parallel. Turn out. And go for the highest one. Go high, 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 high. Turn out high, turn out high. More turn out. And slowly down. Wow, this last turn out really killed me. And parallel. And let's swap sides. Hopefully nothing bad happened to your band. I'm gonna confess, I think I tied my one loose here today because this exercise was easier. Bottom arm is straight, head is resting. Find that scoop position for your side lift. Uh, tailbone is forward, belly button is in, so there's no pressure on your hip flexors. This hand is um, supporting you, so feel free to put quite a lot of pressure there to help you. One leg to parallel, second leg to parallel. Now try and press your side body into the floor already. And now as you lift your legs higher, you're going to try and get the side body even more into the floor. So go up and now only down to the point where your side body is still on the floor. And up and down. And up and down. As fast as you can keep technique perfect. <laughs> Check that your hips are still stacked that your tailbone is pointing forward and that you still have that scoop action happening in your abdominals. We just have two more. And one, two. Side body glued to the floor. Top leg forward, back leg back. Keep them parallel and take them higher and down and higher. And try to make these pulses a little bit smaller. Try to make sure the bottom side body does not leave the floor. Top side body should be starting to feel something. And up, up, two more, up, up, stay there. Both legs together as high as you can. Tailbone forward, belly button in, go higher. And slowly down. Now, find a flat line, lose your scoop. Belly button still super in, but you're not doming. Starting parallel. Take your top leg up in parallel, turn out both legs. Now, increase your turnout as you bring your leg higher. More turnout, more turnout, more turnout. Hold and slowly come down, trying to reach further away into the distance. Like your leg is just, <laughs> what's the word for that? For I don't know. And find the parallel. And lift the top leg in parallel. Both legs turn out, and now as you lift, think that you're starting to spiral from your hip, and then from your hip, that spiral is gonna reach your knee, and then your shin, and then your ankle, and then your foot, and you arrive, and as you go down, think that you're reaching far away, far, far away, and you turn out more, because as you reach far away, you have more space. Legs meet in first, and parallel. Lift in parallel and turn out both legs and start using whichever Im image suits you better. Either reach far away, try and take your leg outside of the socket of your hip. Higher, higher, higher and far away. Hold for a second and come slowly down. Feel it deep on your bum so it's not your glute, it's something under. And find a parallel at the top, at the bottom position. One last one, make it amazing, make it super high. Lift in parallel and turn out. Now, as you lift, really aim to hit behind your shoulder. It might not happen, but we're trying. Higher, higher. Don't sacrifice your turn out. Turn out more higher. Turn out more higher. Turn out more. Stay there. And I'll slowly down. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Reach further. Turn out more. And legs meet in first. <laughs> and parallel. Let's get rid of this. Yeah, leg extension, plus block. Little leg. Okay, final block. I want you to be 
with your belly on the mat, legs are together and parallel. Um, if you have any back pain, you can work with a wider leg if this is still a problem. Turn out the leg if you're with me. Legs together and parallel. Hands alongside your body, palms against your thigh. In your initial position, your shoulder blades are together. So don't let your shoulders sag towards the floor. Shoulder blades together. Now tilt your pelvis so that your tailbone is pressing towards the floor. Pubic bone is pressing on the mat. You're gonna glide your hands towards your knees to lift your chest from the floor. But I want you to think that you're lifting from your middle back, not from your lower back. So press your tailbone more into the floor as you lift higher. And slowly down, shoulder blades stay connected. And reach towards your toes to come up. Make sure your neck is aligned with your spine. And slowly down. And up. Take it as slowly as you need to. Tailbone to the floor. Shoulder blades closer together. And higher. And down. Three more. Inhale up. Tailbone. Shoulder blades. And down. And up. And down. Last one, you're going to stay up with me. Up. Now, hands are glued to your thighs. Tailbone under, pubic bone hurting a little bit on the floor. Shoulder blades together. And now give me your highest one. Let's go high. High, high, hands to second stay there, and forearms to the floor. I think it's what we did today. Both forearms stay on the floor. Again, follow the same instructions for the legs. Together is the default, but adjust according to your back. From here, tailbone to the floor, so your hips are lifted from the mat. Shoulder blades are still together, chest is trying to push through. It might be that you need to come a little bit closer, as in elbows to body. From here, give yourself a long neck. Don't let the weight sway from hip to hip. Weight stays in the middle as you reach your left, your right arm up. And then you bring it back down with no weight. And up and down. Keep going. Thinking that your pubic bone should be pressing towards the floor. Knobbly bits of the hip are not touching the floor. Last one, here you're gonna hold. If this is difficult, keep swaying your arm. If you're with me, push your hand on the mat and lift your forearm. And I'll slowly down, work in the middle. And up, and down, and up, and down. Stay up wherever you are. Both shoulders down towards your bum, pubic bone on the mat, Tailbone tucking under, forearm down, and swap arms. Press your left forearm into the floor. Realign your legs into parallel. Tuck under your tailbone, lift the knobby bits of the hips. Shoulder blades are together, chest is shining forward. Weight does not sway as you reach with your left. And back on the floor, nothing moves. There's no weight on the arm, and the weight is dead in the center of your pelvis. You're not falling towards your left. Two more like so. If you're with me, arm stays up. Work the, left, the right forearm to go up and down. If this is too difficult, keep your forearm on the floor and just keep working with the top arm going up and down. One more, two more. One more, two more, now just go down. Stay there. For both forearms on the floor. I'm gonna go for our last exercise. Chest forward, head facing towards one side. Bend one knee to hold your toes, foot, ankle, or shin. Choose according to your flexibility. Allow your knees to open wide to hold, but then try to work as close to parallel as your back allows you. Initial position, head is on the floor. And you're going to inhale to go up, toes point towards the ceiling. And on your exhale, you're going to go down and you're going to turn your head towards the other side. And up and down. Swap heads. And up and down. One more here. Up 
and down. Now, let's be particular. Let me just hold my legs up. I have a bit of a cut here. There we go. We're gonna do slow ones. So think, shoulder blades together already, and I'll think toes to ceiling. Now, you have toes to ceiling. Now think that you're kicking your legs into your hands, but I don't want you to go over your pubic bone. So find a triangle on the floor between your pubic bone and your two hip bones. From here slowly, go down through your head. One more like this. First toes up, and now kick into your hand. Your head should be aligned with your spine, so don't let it look up. Keep it aligned. And down. Two more and you're done. And up to ceiling and kick. And up. And ceiling. And kick. Kick, kick, kick. And down. Keep your knees bent. Hands on the floor. And just swipe your legs sideways. Hopefully this was not too strong on anyone's lower back. If it was, you probably needed more of an abdominal connection. Take a resting position somewhere if you need one. 